The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details industry. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons. Welcome once again to the West Ham Massive. Thank you for joining me. My name's Gatesy. Please don't forget to drop a like on the stream. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Make sure you leave a comment in the section below. Get involved. So, um, it appears that my return seem to have been, for whatever reason, quite well received. The last video got, uh, for a meagre channel of my size, um, quite, quite good view. So, thank you very much for that. So I thought I'd do another one, a uh, transfer talk. So a couple of other little rumours that I want to delve into. So first things first, I uh, want to talk about, about a guy that's in the MLS at the moment. He's a teammate of Lionel Messi at Inter Miami. Now, his name is Diego Gomez. Now, he's a Paraguayan international, 21 years of age. And the story says that we're looking at him as possibly someone that's going to come in. I suspect this is probably Tim Stighton doing his thing behind the scenes. You know, he seems to fit the age profile of, of obviously someone that's got to bring the average age of our squad down. I think it's a fairly well-established fact last season that we had one of the oldest, if not the oldest, squad in the Premier League. So getting in a Paraguayan international, 21 years of age. Um, again, I'll be brutally honest, I'd never heard of the guy until... This particular news report popped up, so I don't have an encyclopedic knowledge. So if you if you're after that, you're in the wrong place. But yeah, 21 years of age, Paraguayan international, teammate of Lionel Messi. So you know he would have sort of like seen one of the legends. In fact, probably the all-time great of world football, certainly in the modern era. Working alongside him closely, would have learnt a lot of the things that make him the ultimate professional. So maybe he's sort of like got a few tips of the trade off of the, the master, but he's obviously not going to be to that level, but I'm talking in terms of professionalism and, and dedication and whatever. But I don't know. I mean, you know, it's difficult for me to really give a, an informed opinion about someone that I've actually never seen play. But I guess on the face of it, he's, he's got to be half decent. Like I say, he's played for his country a few times. He's, he's playing in a, a reasonable standard. I mean, I don't think that the MLS is quite the, the pub league that people think that it is. I'm not saying that it's it's La Liga Mark II or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But it's a, it's a half-decent standard. And so, he's, he, you know, and possibly he's one of the players that are on the way up. I mean, a lot of players like Lionel Messi and... Back in the day, people like Steven Gerrard, Zlatan Ibrahimovic, people like that went to the MLS at the back end of their career to, for a little bit of a payday, an easier way of, of playing, whatever, less intensity than playing in Europe. Whereas I think this guy is at the other end of that particular progression, that career path. He's at the beginning, the infancy of his his days in, in professional football, as I say, 21 years of age. So possibly he's now got to a point in his career development where he now wants to test himself in Europe. And we're, we're, we're better than, than the London Stadium, I ask you. What, what, what more could he want? But Diego Gomez, um, if any of you guys happen to know anything about him, if you know anything about his performances, either in the MLS or internationally for, for 
Paraguay, you've got your comments section below, get stuck into that. Before I get onto the main topic of conversation, there's another discussion I want to talk about with regards to transfer. But this is more about someone that looks like they're very likely to be on the way out, and that being our, our Moroccan centre back Nayef Aguerre, or Nathan Agard, as uh, Mr. Moyes used to insist upon calling him, which I'm sure went down a, a, like a lead balloon with the player himself. I mean, you imagine that coming into work every day. And the guy that's actually giving you a job is pronouncing your name wrong every single time. That's, that really would grate on my gears. But anyway, so it looks like he's, well, whether it's that he's surplus to requirements, I'm not quite convinced. But it certainly seems like the player himself, for whatever reason, wants out of dodge. Which is a bit of a shame because I'd, I'd like to have seen how he would have operated under the new regime. But it appears that that particular ship has set sail as far as he's concerned and that he wants to seek out employment in pastures new. Now, obviously, we got him from Stade Rennes in Ligue 1 in France. He came in. He had a bit of an injury problem. He'd, he'd had a checkered past with his ankles. And, of course, he played in a pre-season friendly at Glasgow Rangers in, at Ibrox and got an ankle injury in a pre-season friendly, put him out till around about Christmas, from what I remember, give or take. But anyway, he's... Um, he came back in, and I was actually at, at St. James's Park. We played Newcastle, and he, he made a recovery challenge that even to this day, I, I still wonder how the hell he managed to do it. I mean, his, his recovery pace is really something to behold, and, and that was testament to it. But there's been a few over recent months and, and matches that he's been involved in a few situations that have occurred that a lot of people look at, myself included, and have wondered whether actually defensively he's all he's cracked up to be. Now, there's a train of thought, and I'm in this particular category, I've got to be honest, So I do wonder that I think that he probably is a, a pretty decent defender as it goes, but I just think that the attributes that he has in his locker and the way that we were playing under David Moyes, the two things didn't go um, in sync with one another. And what I mean by that is that, as I said, he, one of his biggest weapons is recovery play pace. And the fact that we play a low block would tend to mean that that weapon is maybe not as profound as it would be if we was playing 10, 15, 20 yards further up the pitch. Obviously, you're playing a high line, then recovery pace becomes more of something that you want to have in your weaponry whereas when you're playing in a low block where you're sort of like you're quite close to your goal as a back line quite compact but recovery pace now is is less less of an edge that you you need to have so i do wonder if it was a case of just quite simply he was the right player in the wrong team or the wrong setup at the time under that manager which is why i sort of wonder whether julian lopetegui might have been might be someone that could get the best out of him. But as I say, it appears he's made his mind up and he wants to, to go to somewhere else. And, and good luck to him, fair enough, no hard feelings. But it appears that there's there's two clubs that seem to be in for him. Now, as I say, he came from Ligue 1, and he's obviously Moroccan, so he speaks French. And it appears that Lille would be interested in seeking out some sort of deal to bring him back. Um, whether that be on loan with a view to a permanent or a, a straight permanent, I don't know if uh, obviously the, the two parties between the two clubs need to sit down and have a discussion, see what works for both parties. So Lille are interested in bringing Nayef Aguerre to their, uh, to their ground. But another team has, has cropped up as possibly being interested now. This, I, I've got to be honest, I was like, oh, right, OK, fair enough. And that's Atletico Madrid in La Liga. Obviously, Diego Simeone, their manager. And he's apparently looking into whether Naya Fagir might fill a particular gap in his squad. Now, either way, uh, I do wonder if we've got, if we've got two teams that are competing with each other, maybe we could use that to our advantage and maybe what we could do is we could use each team against each other to leverage up the price. I mean, we got him, what, two, three years ago now and we paid 
somewhere in the region of 30, 35 million from what I remember. And I think there's a reasonable chance that we could get the majority, if not all of our money back if we play our cards right. And there was also rumours about Saudi Pro League's team being involved as well. But I, I, I think that probably he'll end up staying in Europe, quite honestly, because I, I think that you know, if he was a couple of years older, then maybe the Saudi Pro League would have made a bit more sense to me. But he's still in, in what would be considered for a centre-back to be sort of like somewhere in and around his prime years. So I think him going to the Saudi Pro League, from his point of view, would probably be a little bit too soon. Unless, of course, you know, the old saying, money talks and bullshit walks. But we'll wait and see what happens. But it looks like both Lille and Atletico Madrid are possibly interested in bringing him to their particular teams but now we're going to come on to the main story and this is the one that I really want to get into and see what your opinions are as well as the other two stories that I've just articulated to you so we've obviously been saying for many years West Ham fans for quite some considerable time that we are in need of a striker now okay Mikel Antonio has been a great servant to the club He's done a half-decent job when called upon. But I think it's fair to say, you know, with each passing year, that his his edge is becoming more blunted. Look, it's just the passage of time, not a problem. We've obviously got some attacking reinforcements in Mohamed Kadus and Jared Bowen principally. We've obviously still got Danny Ings, but I do wonder whether his long-term future is going to be at London Stadium or not. I suspect he may well find himself back on the south coast before he's too much older but we'll wait and see on that but we've been saying for some time we need to get another striker in the door and we haven't had a striker I think I'm correct in saying a striker that has scored 20 league goals in the top flight since 1986-87 season when a certain Tony Cotty managed that feat that's, that's absolutely astonishing. You think about that. All those years that we've been in top flight football, yes, we've had a couple of relegations here and there, but for us to actually turn around and say in the intervening years, not one single solitary striker has managed to hit the back of the net 20 times or more in a top flight league season is quite a damning indictment of some of the, the dirge that we've brought in through the door and had playing up top for us. So, anyway, it now appears that on the radar of West Ham United is England international and Brentford striker Ivan Tony. Yes, him of the no-look penalty. It appears that we... And it's a fairly well-established fact that David Sullivan is actually something of a fan of Ivan Tony and has been for some time. And this was a fact that was confirmed by the Peterborough chair, Darren McAntony. Now, if you're not too sure of the relevance of that, well, Darren McAntony, the Peterborough chairman, Peterborough owner, Ivan Tony was actually at Peterborough United before he made his move to Brentford. And Darren McAntony is on, he's on record as saying that he is well aware that David Sullivan is a big, big fan of Ivan Tony. So maybe that gives a little bit more credence to the rumour that it, it's we're looking at him as a, as a possible option for a striker berth. And to be honest with you, I think he'd be an outstanding signing. I really do. I think he's... He's got all the attributes that I think a, a pre, modern Premier League striker needs. You know, he's quick. He's he's you know used both feet, good in the air, hold the ball up well, decent turn of pace. He's got quite a lot going for him. England international, international as I say. The one thing that I do worry about is obviously he's come through. He's, he's obviously he was at Newcastle years back. He's been to Peterborough. He's then gone to Brentford. Obviously, when he went to Brentford, they were a championship team. It was part of the squad that got them promoted. And obviously has, has kept Brentford in the Premier League. He had that little period out where, obviously, about eight months, I think he was out for thereabouts for betting irregularities. And he's come back. You know, he's, he served the time because he, he did the crime. He's come back. And obviously went to the Euros. And yeah, he's, he's now available. And the one thing that worries me, though, is that we've got no European football this season. And I do wonder, I, I wonder if a player of the calibre of Ivan Tony may well be sort of like holding out for a team 
that has that particular offer that they can sort of like say to him, come to us, you will be able to play in a European competition. Maybe not the Champions League, you know, but at least a European qualified team, so whether that's Europa League or Conference League, give him the experience of playing against the, the better teams in Europe. I think that might be something that he could be tempted by a little bit more readily than possibly what we're able to do at the moment. But that being said, you know, if, if we need to sort of slap a couple of extra bob on the signing on fee and the, and the sort of weekly wages to maybe tempt him, I don't know. Maybe there's, there's a deal that can be done. I personally would be really happy with that as a signing. I think that would be a real statement of intense signing from Julian Lopetegui to come in and say, right, this is this is me putting my stamp on it. You guys have had this problem for years. I'm going to come in. I'm going to sort that problem out. Ivan Tony's my man. He's going to come in. He's going to do the bizzo. He's going to be the first guy since 1987 to hit 20-plus Premier League goals. Have some of that. How's you like those onions? Uh, I would be really, really happy with that. You might have a, a difference of opinion. You've got the comment section. But let me know. I think Ivan Tony would be a really good addition to the squad. Like I say, I think with the other attacking members that we've got, you imagine a front three of Ivan Tony going through the middle, Jared Bowen on the right, Mo Kudus on the left. You know, you've got Paketar just behind them pulling the strings. That'd be really good. I think that'd be a brilliant blend going forward. Obviously, it's also about keeping the ball out at the other end of the net, of course. You can't be sort of like too open. But I think that that, that would be a really good attacking, you know, and, and let's be right, you know, part of the reason why that we've got the manager in that we've got is that the manager before played a, a more pragmatic, safety first, and break slightly on sort of football, you know, not really on the front foot that much, which is why we've all got the ump and, and wanted him down the Kermit. So I think that this would be a, a really good move and get a lot of the, I think, straight away a lot of the fans that are maybe a little bit hesitant about the credentials of the, of the current incumbent manager, whether that might that might just sort of get them on side a little bit more. I, I, I say I'd be all over that side, but let me know what you think. But anyway, listen, that's enough from me. Um, a few things for you to get involved in on the discussion point. Diego Gomez possibly coming in from into Miami in the MLS. Paraguayan international, 21 years of age. Then obviously on the way out, Naya Fagare. You know, it's it's Brentford, England international, no look penalty specialist. Could he be the answer? The long standing problem that we've had, the number nine shirt. Who's who's got to get it? Is it going to be Ivan Tony? Well, we'll wait and see. But give us your comments on those three. And if you've got anything else you want to discuss on a future broadcast, please feel free to make your suggestions. Get them in the suggestions box as well. And don't forget to tell your friends. Don't forget to tell your friends. That we're coming back for the new season. We're going to be uh, getting getting maybe a few little changes here and there. It might be slightly different to what we've done before in certain regards. But tell your friends, any West Ham friends or non-West Ham supporting friends, I really don't mind. Come one, come all. We'll have a good laugh about things. And, uh, yeah, it'll, it'll be good fun. But uh, thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon. Stay safe. Come on, you Irons. The West Ham Massive are pleased to support Iron Supporting Food Banks. They are a group of West Ham fans and friends inspired by the work of other football food banks around the country. They collect food and cash donations for Newham Food Bank in Beckton, who supply sub-distribution centres in the borough seven days a week and hand out several hundred three-day emergency food packs every month to families in need. They are also working with other groups to improve conditions for vulnerable adults and children in the Newham community. You can help by making a donation to their Just Giving page. You will find the link to this in the description section of the video details in this stream. Thanks for your support. Come on, you irons.